Hey everyone, uh, my name is Dr. Connor McClure. I am a physical therapist here at Emerge Pediatric Therapy in our Carborough Clinic. And in today's video, I wanna talk about the physical activity guidelines for youth. Uh, these are based off of the second edition of the US Department of Health and Human Services Physical Activity Guidelines for Americans. It's published in 2018, consistent with similar guidelines from the UK, Canada, Australia, etc. Uh, before we get into the guidelines, I just want to review some definitions. Uh, the first being different types of exercise as defined in the guidelines. So, first, aerobic exercise. Um, often we refer to this as cardio or conditioning. Um, these can be done in long or short bursts, but this is often uh, defined as rhythmically moving your muscles back and forth for a sustained period of time. This is focusing largely on aerobic and cardiorespiratory fitness. Um, in the guidelines, you will see references for intensity. Now there is moderate intensity and vigorous intensity. Moderate intensity could best be defined by a five out of six out of 10 in terms of difficulty. And a rule of thumb for moderate intensity aerobic exercise might be that you could talk while doing it, but not sing. Uh, vigorous intensity, on the other hand, might be a seven or eight out of 10. And you can talk, but only for a few words at a time before having to breathe. Uh, aerobic exercises might look like running, wheeling, hopping, skipping, uh, games such as tag or chase, uh, hiking, and then a variety of sports such as swimming, soccer, martial arts, biking, and so on. Next up is muscle strengthening exercise. Uh, obviously, this exercise is focused on strengthening muscles power, muscle mass, muscular endurance. And the key principle for these sort of activities is intensity and overloading your muscles beyond their normal capabilities throughout the day. And you will often see these activities defined with terms such as reps and sets. Muscle strengthening activities could be things like climbing playground equipment, playing tug of war, Picking up or carrying heavy objects, uh, carrying in the groceries, for example, um, or classical body weight or weight training exercises would count here. Lastly, the guidelines refer to bone strengthening activities as activities that produce impact or tension force on the muscles, or excuse me, on the bones. Um, these are often weight-bearing exercises or loaded exercises, and there's a significant overlap between many aerobic exercises and muscle strengthening exercises here. Specific to bone strengthening activities, like I said, there's a lot of overlap here, but we're looking at impact and loading, so things like running, jumping, jumping rope, hopscotch, and then sports like basketball, gymnastics, and so on. Now, to talk about the guidelines themselves. There are two big categories here. There's preschool aged kids, three to five years old or so, and then there's gonna be school aged kids. For preschool, the specific guidelines are a little more general. We're looking for about three hours total per day of any sort of activity between light, moderate, and vigorous. Uh, I like to say this as uh, active play throughout the day. It should be varied. Uh, it could be structured or unstructured. Uh, we shouldn't think too hard about kids at, at this age when we're trying to encourage activity. We just want to make sure they're moving for many hours throughout the day. Now, when we move to what is defined as school-aged kids, maybe 6 through 17 years or so, um, we can break this down into 60 minutes per day, which is 420 minutes total per week, I think. This should consist of aerobic, muscle strengthening, and bone strengthening exercises, most of which should be 
aerobic exercise. Um, this should be moderate on average with vigorous aerobic exercise at least three days per week. With muscle strengthening and bone strengthening, we're also looking at about three days per week on average, trying to accumulate 60 minutes total every day throughout the week. Uh, these are just guidelines. I would say on average, uh, more is better. Um, meeting and exceeding these guidelines should be the goal to encourage health, fitness, and longevity into adulthood. Uh, lastly, the question is, how can we help here at Emerge? Um, big list here, there's a lot of different ways uh, a therapist might be able to encourage activity. Uh, first being role modeling, I think this applies at home and in the clinic. Uh, kids who see their parents or their caregivers or their therapist be active might tend to encourage them to be active. Um, it's always important to personalize activities to what the child enjoys, what they need, what they uh, prefer to do, what is more difficult for them to do. Um, it's important to block time out throughout the day. Obviously, if you're shooting for 60 minutes per day of activity, sometimes it can be helpful to set aside 60 minutes per day just devoted to activity. It's important to progress slowly. Um, we see injury risk increase when we go from zero to 100 too quickly. Um, a nice way to do this is just to slowly but surely replace sedentary behaviors with active alternatives when possible. Um, a standing desk comes to mind or walking to school if possible, uh, biking instead of driving, and so on and so forth. That's a good overview of the basic guidelines, some definitions, and what we should be shooting for every day of the week. If you have more questions or would like to, uh, you think your child might need some more help getting to these uh, activity guidelines, feel free to reach out, leave a comment down below, or get in touch. Thanks.